those. You've already heard of all the coping mechanisms in the world, okay? Meditation, go to yeah. the gym. Yeah, perfect. It's perfect. Right. But that can help you, and that will help you over time. Now, if you understand the situation in a different way, in a different manner on what has happened, you will recover instantly. Instantly you will recover there and then because now you've understood it in a different way. Hi everyone. I guess we are live. Yes, we are. So thank you so much whosoever is seeing this video later on and whosoever is thinking of joining this video right now. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining the video. I can see you are coming in. I'm saying hello to everybody. So today we are in our fourth episode of men's mental health series where we have a very interesting topic today. Three thumb rules to get over your past relationship. Soon our coach perception underscore shifter Raju Patel will be joining us. I'm just waiting for him to join us. He has just waved up. Hi. Uh, so we'll wait for him before he joins us. I just wanted to thank you all for joining in right now for coming up with your interesting, interesting topic where you want us to discuss all that in front of you all at Instagram live. We would be taking up the topics in our further episodes, but today the hot topic would be three thumb rules to get over past relationships. So I'm just waiting for our coach to join. Uh, just hold. He's going to be live with us soon, I guess. He's just waved us hi. In the meanwhile, hello to everybody who is joining in right now. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, 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 Raju. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for joining in. We are just waiting for you for the hot topic today. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So I can see people joining us right now. I'm just waving them. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Thank you for joining in. So we are going to start this session. And before starting the session, I would like to welcome again. Uh, Mr. Raju Patel, who is our life coach for today and very hot topic which we picked up, which we received from different, different audience, three thumb rules to get over our past relationships. And Raju would be telling us about it in detail. Before we start this, I just want to give a brief about why we picked up this topic. We all know that, you know, relationships are the most beautiful and the most important part of human life. But it happens sometimes that because of one reason or the other, we are not, you know, uh, in, in a one relationship and we uh, just want to move on from that relationship. But there are certain scenarios which keep chasing us at the back and we are not able to move on. It's simple for few, but it's very, very difficult for many. So that's why maybe the reason why, you know, people keep, pulling back and forth with the relationship issues. And that's why this is the this is the main reason why we have picked up this topic. So before starting uh, the topic, thank you so much again. I would now give all the mics and phones to you so that you can start with the session. Thank you so much, Radhu. You please go ahead from here. Yeah, that's great, Vertica. Thanks for the introduction. Um, I just want to start with that. Uh, I think you're doing a great job. Um, especially with men's mental health. Um, so carry on with the good work. Uh, yeah, no problem. So yeah, let's start with um, the three thumb rules that we want to uh, look into. And I think, like Vertica said, that I think we all have this issue. And if we don't have it right now, we're going to have it sometime in the future. Right. When breakup is something that you're not going to be able to handle. And now, you know, some people get away and be able to understand it and see the situation in a different light and come out of it straight away. But some people never come out, you know, and they stay with that same, these negative emotions from a past breakup. And maybe if it was trauma of any sort, then it'd be worse. So the first one I want to um, um, look into is mm. the bitter taste that leaves us uh, when it comes to a breakup. Now, whenever there's a breakup, you're not going to obviously feel good. It's going to leave a bitter taste. It's aftertaste of the relationship. And most of the time, it's our inner self-talk and what we are believing 
um, on how we're going to be able to handle this situation and this situation for the future. So if you are telling yourself that I'm not going to be able to cope with that person in my life, or I'm not going to live, or how am I going to live, or what's going to happen, or, you know, um, I'm going to be depressed my whole life now. I think that's the initial thing that we need to look at, is that what we believe in when this bitter taste has left, is, is just left with us, what we are saying to ourselves is the biggest, biggest thing, that if we keep having that, that Mara or that, you know, that chant that right. we're doing consistently that, you know, this is, you know, I'm not going to be able to live my life without this person, then you're not going to be able to live your life without the person. It's, it's, it's understandable. It's straightforward. Okay. But if you somehow find a way later or even at that stage and think, you know what? Okay, this happened and I will be able to work my way out. And I would say the best way to work it out is to channel this bit of it. So you need to channel it in the right direction. Now, say, you know, obviously if I'm upset or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm angry and, you know, I'm sad or whatever it is. Now, when you're angry, you're, you're sad about something and because of what you said, you're angry, okay? Now, just imagine it as you're hitting the brake pedal on the car and the clutch at the same time. And when you're hitting it, you're going to you know friction the car's not going to move it's going to stall and you're going to do the same you're going to stall as well so you need to handle your anger in 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 the right way now if we don't deal with these emotions that are left um from another person correctly then obviously it's going to make it worse you know over over time it's gonna it's just going to get greater and greater and greater you know what i mean now see like you've heard all these coping mechanisms, you've already heard of all the coping mechanisms in the world, okay? Meditation, go to yeah. the gym. Yeah, perfect. It's perfect. Okay. But that can help you, and that will help you over time. Now, if you understand the situation in a different way, in a different manner, and what has happened, you will recover instantly. Instantly, you will recover there and then, because now you've understood it in a different manner. But when you've understood it as, oh, no, he shouldn't have done that to me or she shouldn't have done that to me or, you know, she was, you know, always, you know, in, in showing me bad emotions to my life or telling me what to do or yeah. whatever it was, whatever the relationship issue that you had, if you're seeing it in their perspective and you're like, you know what, this is what she was like, that's her life, um, you know, I'm, that's got nothing to do with me, I can't change it or whatever it is, when you see it in a different life, you would instantly feel better. That bitter taste will not be there. Right. Or, or you coping mechanisms for the symptoms that come after the problem, which is go to the gym every day, do some meditation, you know, things like that. So I'm not saying that these things don't help, but what I am saying does help. But at the same time, if you see things correctly, what is reality? You know, can you live without this person? Yes or no, you can. That's reality. You know what I mean? Because you can, regardless, you will be, you will find a way whatsoever. You'll find a way to live without this person. So I think that's the bitter taste that comes after it. And that's how to solve or come to a solution with these uh, resolution, with these um, bitter tastes after. Right. I have something to say over here. Uh, when you say about bitter taste, uh, it might happen. Like I've seen that sometimes. That maybe one person in a relationship, when uh, they break up, one person is mature enough to leave it on a good note, but the other person leave it on a bitter note. Mm -hmm. In that scenario, I've seen most of the time that the person who has left it on a bitter note keep, you know, uh, trying to get back into the relationship because maybe uh, he or she has not given a full stop in their own mind to this relationship. While the other person who has left the relationship has mm -hmm. given it a full stop in a, on a good note. So do you think that while, you know, uh, breaking up or while, you know, parting the ways, it is very, very important to be mutually at the same page rather than one person leaving on a bitter note and the other person is all together on a different frame of mind. Mm -hmm. I think mutually would be better, no? 
Well, I don't think it is uh, possible for it to be mutually. I think it's always a bre- the breakup and the breaker. So what, what you're doing, what yeah. you what happened here yeah. was I was thinking, okay, there's some people that are um, that break up in their relationship, but they don't get affected. It's like if you have a, um, I don't know, if you have an iPhone and I steal that from you or you lose it, it will hurt you, you know. You'd have to go through the bitter taste and all the all the things I'm saying in this video today. Yeah. But if you give that phone away to your friend, say, you know what, you can have or buy this off me, then yeah. you'll, not as much. It won't be a negative miss. It will be a happy kind of a miss that, you know, once I had this phone, I don't need it. So I think the person that breaks up um, will obviously feel it being negative because they didn't want that. Right. Um, I think I'm going to come to that with with the next um, next summer rule, uh, which is uh, dependency. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, I think with with us being obviously we we have we get very dependent on people in our lives. Okay. Right. Now we have our mother, we have our father. You know, everyone. Um, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend. We always get dependent. Now, how I was taught to see was like Raju in your life. You will always. You're always on this train that you're traveling in and passengers will come and passengers will go. But here, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep passengers within this, you know, this, yeah, this yeah. Doors, yeah, in the train yeah. um, and you're not letting them go. But what you need to understand is that when they go, more passengers will come on this train of yours. Do you get it? But then when it's your time to go, you will have to also go. So, you know, I think when someone explained it to me in that way, and I thought, you know what, okay, let them go. Let's see who's next to come. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? So let's not try and help and be dependent mentally yeah. uh, you know, with these people. So I think, you know, we only, we only see, we only know what we've got when it's gone. You know what I mean? It's totally yeah. understandable. When we've lost it, that's when we know that, oh, and when like the breaker and the breakup, the breaker doesn't want the person. Yeah. So he's never gonna he or she's never gonna want the person. But the breaker wants the person. And what you want, you want more of. Regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you haven't got it, you're gonna want more of it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So right. I think we need to tell ourselves that okay, I don't I haven't got it, but what I have got. I'll concentrate on that, you know what I mean? And I will get this, you know, I think I want to tell everybody that, you know, a relationship, a car, a house, a family, uh, marriage, kids, yeah? Guys, like, you don't need to change stuff. This is natural stuff. This is easy peasy, easy stuff. You're going to get this in your life, you know what I mean? But right. looking into yourself, understanding yourself, you know, having a better relationship with people or having a better life for yourself, that don't come easy. That's something you will have to learn and educate yourself consistently throughout your life. Well, there's never yeah. there's no ending ending to it. So I think that's a big thing. And with, with another thing, say with um, dependency, is obviously the person's low self esteem. So if you're, I remember I met a guy once. Um, and uh, he, was, he was my client and, you know, he had issues with trauma, but then break up as well. And I noticed that he's got low self-esteem within him. He doesn't, he perceives himself, if not knows what low self-esteem is, that he perceives himself a low person as not worthy, as not, yes. you know, that he can, you know, achieve things or something. So I think if you gain that more the, that self-esteem or self from, from yourself then you won't break up with yourself because i couldn't understand you going through a breakup and you've had the breakup but that doesn't mean you need to with yourself so you need to keep up with your you will self you know you can't neglect yourself you know what i mean i think that's when your um self-esteem raises because now you're you know, you're 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 the, you're the man now. You know what I mean? Because you look after yourself, you yeah. feel better, feel confident. You're gonna go out there and you're gonna find a pretty lady, hopefully. But you know, if you've got low self-esteem after your breakup, 
um, because of this dependency issue that, you know what, I might not get no one else. You know, that's why I'm still dependent on this person. And that's what happens. A lot of these thoughts that, that come to our mind that, you know, if I do break up and, and because of low self-esteem, I'm not going to be able to, you know, but this is, this is the best thing about it. A breakup is the best thing that can ever happen to you in your life. But really? It's, it is the best thing. You know why? Because right. it's giving you an opportunity to learn about yourself. Right. Simple, yeah? Right. Now, if you're a child, and if I take a toy off you, you're not going to think, oh, how do I have myself now without this toy? You're just going to cry. When you're older, you know that, okay, this is what kicks it's the relationship, it's this, this is what's affecting, this is not affecting me, you know, and it's all about, like I said previously, it's all about this self-discovery. That's something you won't get. But if you don't have the breakup, how are you going to know yourself? Right. You'll never know yourself, are you? If you're not going to go through these issues, you're never going to know who you are, what is affecting you, what is not, what should I do better, or what should I not notice, or do notice in the next relationship. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think a breakup, I think, is the best thing. And I know it's sad, and I know it's bad, and I know it's painful. You know what I mean? But this is the opportunity to learn something new about yourself. But on the other end of the stick, what we sometimes do is that we lose ourselves. So like I said, we lose, our, we neglect ourselves, and then we'll I'll get locked down for steam. Then that will bring probably going to anxiety. Or what if no one ever likes me? Yeah. That will lead to depression, loneliness, you know, and that will break up your relationships with your probably your family and stuff like that. And you're just going down this little steep hill all the way down. So the quicker you pick yourself up, the better. Right. Now, to pick yourself up, like I said, you can obviously do the meditating. You can go to the gym and stuff like that. But that will be a small pickup. But if you just understand that, hold, hold up, this person has their own decisions in right. You know what I mean? Anything, anything, that, it depends on the person, what that person needs to understand about the situation. And when the person understands the situation in a different light, and it was perfect because I got this um, little thing um, from this book where um, this, this, this person was on the train and he's seen the person and he's seen the, his kids running around m making a big mess. So he asked, them, oh, he said, your kids are making a big mess here. Like, can't you see it? What's going on? He's like pissing me off and he's pissing everybody else off on the train. So that guy says, oh, he is. Now the guy looks depressed and he says, oh, sorry about that. Then he goes, I just buried my wife. The minute he said, I've just buried my wife, this other guy came out perceived the whole thing differently. He did not get upset with the guy anymore. He weren't angry with the guy anymore. He started to be like, you know, sentimental and started asking him if he needs any help or something like that. So yeah. it's just, you know, when someone breaks up with you, it could be because they got their own issues that they can't deal with. Maybe okay. you're not you're not that companion, you know, and you know, there's billions of people in this world. So you need to see that on that perspective of what's going on in there. The minute you understand that, you know what, it's their life, that something is going wrong in their life, I just don't understand. Let's just be there for that person. Because if I tell the truth, that's kind of real love, you know what I mean? No matter, yeah, no matter right. what, that, that's kind of real love. So um, uh, that's, I think that's, that's one of the, the, the bigger things. Now, when we link it to our survival, so say we need a certain amount of money to survive, okay? We need a relationship to obviously have children and to survive. But who's told us that? Who's told us that we need to get married? Who's told us that we need to have a wife? Who's told us that we need to have kids? Whoever's created us has made us this way. They don't even need to tell us. They've made oh. us this way. Yeah, yeah. Whoever's yeah. created or whatever has, who or what, they have induced us with thing of what Yeah. What's next? What next yeah. to be done? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can then multiply on this world. It's simple. It's that simple. But if you look at it in that sense that, okay, I need a partner to survive, then it's going to affect you. That hold up, I need a partner to survive. I need a partner to have children with. And you had all these dreams about, you know, I'm going to, you know, yeah. have 
one day and, you know, more weddings going to be like this. And then one minute, boom, it's happened to me. It's really happened to me, you know. One minute, boom, I don't want to be with you no more. Or my parents have said no. Or this has happened or that has happened. You ain't got a job. Whatever it is. And then, stay down because now you've linked it to your survival. But if I tell you the truth, you don't need nothing like that for your survival. Yes, you need a bit of money to survive. That's about it. Now, relationships and that, they'll come and go like that train journey you know what i mean friends will come and go all of this will come and go. so i don't think we should keep our focus on that you will always get that in your life you know but you're really if i tell this truth people or we are just focusing on these little things in life marriage is a little thing if i tell the truth you know um you know buying a car buying a house all these are little things everyone's accomplished it man you look around everybody's accomplished it like it's not a big deal yeah and even when you do get to that stage it's gone. Like the happiness is gone. Right. You know, so we need to keep thinking and, and, and ask ourselves that how can we challenge or learn from this new thing and get bigger and stronger? Now, not everybody can do that. And if you can do that, then that's life. That's you being a human being. Because the more you challenge yourself, the more you learn, you're getting better. And naturally, everything else will get better. You know, you will have that relationship and if you can't cope with that relationship or you know, you um, have a breakup, you can handle it because you know you, you know yourself, you know what's going to take you, you know what's not going to take you, you know when to have this conversation or not, you know that this person's toxic for me, I don't really need this person in my life or I do, this is how I need to do it, you know, and which now brings me to the third summer rule, which is expectations. You know what I mean? So. It's really bad. Expectation kills. Somebody <laughs> told me one time. Expectation kills. This yeah. is so true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think with um, expectations in the relationship, if you've got expectations and the divorce rate is really, you're bound to have a divorce because you want people to act like you want them to like, and nobody ever in the world is going to be like you want them to be or act like. Right. Nobody, everybody knows, nobody likes to be told. I don't, you don't know. You know what I mean? True. So, unless you want to learn how to influence people, and there's a book that how to make friends and influence people. You know, but you don't, all you just need to do is not expect from others and from yourself. You know, so if you want someone to have your wife, you know, be more kind, have a job, Whatever it is, yeah, you work on that. You work on to be, and you work on to have a job, because that's what you need. What they need, what your wife, what, what your partner needs, that's that's up to them. So you let them deal with how they want to do. Deal with it. If they ask, then that's fine. But what tends to happen? We expect. Okay, so you know, I expect you to come see me every Monday or every two days, or, you know, whatever it is. Or you're not seeing me. Why not? What's the problem? This that. Now, the person has their own life. You know, when you get married, oh, women need to always cook and clean. You know, men go to work. So these expectations, these things are being conditioned within our minds. Maybe it used to work back in the day, but it doesn't work now. And it's been proven because everyone's having a divorce. 43% rate in the UK of, of divorces. You know, so obviously we're doing something wrong. That's right. not, you know, that's not working out for ourselves. And then, um, like my, I think, yeah, my wife just uh, said something about expectation will always lead to hurt, and because you will always feel let down. That's true. Yes. And and the other flip side to it is, if you do one thing, two thing, three things, they will always say, "What about the fourth thing?" You know what I mean? So you haven't yeah. done, you haven't done this, you haven't done that, but you know you've tried your best and you've done this, 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 this. So expectations never ends. Regardless, no matter how much the other person will do for you, if you expect, you'll always expect. And I remember I mentioned this in a group once and um, this chap said, um, oh, um, I would expect my wife to tell me what's going on in her mind. Now, I, I feel sorry for the guy. I really do because, <laughs> like, you know, not everybody is good at sharing their feelings or certain people their feelings. Some things that you can't tell your partner, you know what I mean? And, you know, you might feel as a man, you might just feel that you're, you know, 
um, not that security no more for that person. And you don't want to feel or see that way because then that person will start duties. So, you know, I don't think we should even expect them to tell us. If they're having a bad day, bad day they're not telling you that this is the reason. Yeah? You should expect yourself to how can you make it a good day for them? Right. Now, when it's, you see, people have their own time to share their feelings. So it's up to her when she wants to tell you. She might not want to tell you today. Let her think in. Let her do her thinking. And when she's ready to tell you, she doesn't. But you can't keep expecting people and start forcing a relationship. But then it becomes controlling. Right. You know, and the times now um, with men, they get so frustrated when the woman goes. Because a lot of people now, they go always obviously. Obviously, they're not, but you know, all the women go out and men get really frustrated. Are you going out so late? It's this, it's that. And I know it's anxiety, yeah, and your security, and you're thinking, oh, what if I lose? The, you know, and the survival instinct. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. But if you don't let them do what they want to do, they're going to want to do it more. Right. So what to expect. If you want a role model, you can. You do your thing. It's up to you if you want to be with. But nobody's forcing you. Nobody's putting a gun on your head saying to you that you need to be with this person. Yeah? Whatever you've put in into the relationship, that's fine. The day you want out, you can say you want out. Now, when it's a breakup, if someone has done that to you, it's their choice. You right. know, if it's their choice, you can't expect them to then be with you for the rest of your life. You know, relationships doesn't come with a guarantee. Life itself doesn't come with a guarantee. Ooh. You know, you go to Argos and get your take your receipt down and say, oh, I, want, "I want my money back." You know, it doesn't work like that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Right. So, yeah, yeah. So you know, you need to understand that. You know, it's up to you what you want to do. If that person is leaving because you've got probably depression today or tomorrow, that's up to them. If you can handle that, and they've got depression or whatever tomorrow, and you can handle that, then that's fine. But God hasn't gave everybody that strength, what they can handle. You know? and, and it's totally up to them. If they want to break relationship, leave the relationship or whatever, um, that's up to them. Now, if it's affecting you and you're expecting, you know, I think expectations doesn't come from love. I think if you're expecting from your partner, I think you've got the misconception of love and attachment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Same with your children. If you're expecting them to be your behavior in a different way, then it's not love because love is when you let them be. Yeah. Let them be however they want. You can advise them, but yeah. you let them be. Again. So it's the same with your partner. You need to let your partner be as they want. No partner wants to be controlled. They will go. I'm telling you now, it won't last long. 43% success rate. Yeah, they will go. Nobody likes to be told what to do. That's simple. Right. So, yeah, if it's love, then you let them do what they want. If they want to leave the relationship, they'll leave the relationship. Because you love them, you will accept that. Yeah. But he, you're self-consumed, you're just thinking about yourself. That's not love, that's attachment. It's attachment that, oh, if that person goes out tomorrow, they have a car accident, I'll have to look after them for the rest of their life. That's attachment, that's not love. Love is when they have an accident, I'm there for them and I'll look after them for the rest of their life. Right. That, you know what I mean? Right. You know, I think what happens is this, this, this expectation is like wanting to have this expectation of this achievement. So I've got a um, wife, I've got married. It's an achievement. And happiness is from achievement. If you ever want to be happy in your life, just keep achieving. That's, that's happiness, really. Every time you achieve something, you'll be happy. So, right. and dopamine, the reward. But when you lose, think, so when your break, relationship ends, now that's not an achievement. So that's not going to give you happiness now. You know what I'm trying to say? And yeah. if you're not, achievement is something you show everyone in it. So you've got a medal, you show them. Have you noticed how many people put on Facebook that I am now married? Right. Put the photos up, I'm engaged. Yeah. Okay. Now you've had a breakup. Why don't you try putting them photos up? You won't. Because they see a difference between that. They see the winning and the losing. Yes, yes. As much as them three fancy months that had in the relationship, if it lasts for longer, then that's great. But you know, that first honeymoon period, yeah, that is perfect. But then the last 
the honeymoon period, you need to enjoy that as well. It's going to come. You know what I mean? It's going to come regardless. And then you should in, you should post that up as well, that this is an achievement. This is something I've learned. We've had a great relationship. It was perfect. I enjoyed it. They made a different... Um, they wanted to break up. I feel like I've, you know, been hurt or broke yeah. up. I know that wisely. Share it to the people that you need to share about. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, um, when... Uh, yeah, so I just want to talk about this, this thought thing as well. I think I missed that bit out. Now... When you're sharing this information, so when you're going through any emotions, breakup, and you're sharing this to someone, yeah, you will only get to the share, you'll only need to share it when you're messed with your thinking. So, and initially you'll have to share, but after you won't. Okay, now let me tell you how it works. You always, some, always you get associated with something, okay? Yeah. Something reminds you of the person, okay? Now, we can't delete that. Because if you delete your memory, you won't know how to eat, you won't know how to walk, you won't know how to speak. Yeah. So memory is important. So it will associate something will associate with the person. Now a thought will come. Oh yeah, I used to go out with this person here. Yeah. Okay. So the thoughts come. Now, if you play with this thought, you've gone into thinking. Now, when you're thinking, this is where the issue is. This is where now you need to share thinking. You need to either write it down or you need to go share it with someone and get it out. And then you'll understand how silly you are, you know, when you hear it or when you see how, how silly you are being with this, you know. But if you stop it at the thought, and like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that was that was great. Yeah, and, and watch yourself. This, this always happens with a lot of people. You'll notice that. Once you stop it at the thought, that's it. But then when you go to association, when you go to uh, the thought, and then you go it, then you start in how life back then you know and you know oh, life was good life was bad but then this happened and that happened and you go into that's it now you're in now you're on this scrapbook and now you need to go and share that information or something so remember that you know th um, sharing isn't always needed yeah needed when you've messed with your thinking and initially it will be needed obviously because you have to mess with your thinking but you know it's, it's simple, like, if this has gone out of a relationship now, there's no point in you sitting there scratching your head um, and thinking, oh, how did this happen? Why did this happen? How could I have done this better? How could I have done that better? What if I did this? What if they... Oh, are they thinking like this? They're not thinking like this. Like, hello, get up, move on. It's simple. Yeah. It's, it's very, like, if, if you look at it in the full process, it's very hard to do if you're going to do all that, all that thing. So stop it at the thought. Yeah, person had a good time with him or it was a bad him. Whatever it was, it's got finished. Let me look at other things. Let me look at my work. Let me look at my family. Let me look at this. Let me look at that. Other things in your life, look at that as well. Right. And when there's a time where you do find another relationship, you're ready. But here, if you're still stuck in that one, you're not ready for another relationship. And right. that person will see that in you. Do you get me? That you Yeah, yeah you're like, you're not letting go of your past. And then that person won't be, won't be with you. So then you're going to go through another breakup. And then you're going to go one after one after one after one after that. So right. tell the truth. Take some time out. Go into recovery mode. Like you put your phone into recovery mode when you're updating the iTunes. Go into recovery mode for a bit. One month, three months, six months. Up to you. Work yourself out. See what's happened. What have you learned from this? Grow from it. Improve. And then look for a better relationship because I've told the truth my relationships have only got better because I've got better I've understood what to choose and what not to choose right right mm -hmm. so uh, thank you so much for that uh, Raju uh, with that just wanted to add one thing what I understood mm -hmm. from all the three thumb rules which you share is that uh, you need to have the self love and self worthiness within yourself respect mm -hmm. your own self before you know depending on uh, the entirely on the different person when you said the second point which is dependency definitely which this has come from our culture where culture says that if you have the perfect husband or a perfect wife or a perfect boyfriend then you are good and if you don't then something is wrong with you so yeah. don't think that something is wrong with you maybe you know it's it's meant to be you are if you're not in a good relationship, maybe there is some other relationship which is waiting for you. So uh, instead of doubting yourself, it's better to just sit with it, relax, see what's going on, what has happened and just move on. So 
that's what I feel that everybody should do. The only issue which comes and I see every time coming in is person comes in a self-doubt situation when somebody leaves them. That's a big no-no. That is why I understood that, you know, you should not self-doubt yourself that there is some problem with you. No, no, no. no. It is Never. not. It is Never. not. Right. So uh, with that, I guess we uh, should uh, be winding up the session. Uh, the three thumb rules, if you want to reach out again for more detailed, uh, you know, discussion around this. Raju would be the right person to deal with because he has been dealing with such issues previously as well. You can reach him out on his Instagram. For self-worth and self-confidence issues, please, you may reach out to me. DM us for any of the topic which you want us to discuss because we are here to just discuss what you want to listen. We are picking up the topics which are, of course, hot. This is one of the hottest topics, but I am sure it will help more and more people who will watch it. Make sure you leave us a heart or a comment or reach out to us for any feedback or suggestion. Again, I would like to thank you, Raju, for this. Uh, we would uh, definitely come up with more interesting topics. Depends upon what you want to hear. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much, all the viewers who have joined in and left hearts. And thank you for us. And, you know, of course, we are... Uh, we have got very smart audience today because they know that, you know, somebody said in the between, there's no point of dwelling at the same point. And that's yeah. correct. There's no point. Life no. moves on and you should. Okay. Am I right? 100%. Vertiga, 100%. Great. So, uh, I see many people are joining right now. So, guys, you can see the, you know, uh, the session again. I'll be leaving that on my Instagram handle. Uh, you can reach out to us for more updates. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raju. Bye-bye once again. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.